<laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, hi. It's so good to see you guys. Okay, so we have a Tolstoy, a Tolstoy live show on my channel this time, which yeah. is unheard of. Um, for do you want to talk about family happiness first and then Polykushka, or what do you want? Yeah. Sure, I have them separated in my notes, so whatever you want to do, okay, I'm cool. good with. Um, yeah, so we're still in the short stories of Tolstoy, so we had two this month, um, and then we'll start with family happiness, which will be interesting, but um, <laughs> feel free to like put you know what you guys thought, if you liked them, um, anything like that, and I guess Carolyn, should we start? I don't know. I feel like we should just start with some random thoughts because like we haven't really talked about it too much but mm -hmm. um so do you want to just have like the first half be all family happiness the second half be polikushka okay um so for family happiness i i was going into it knowing that it was from a female perspective which is something that we don't often get with tolstoy so i was really excited about that and um i was interested in the the difference uh the age difference between the characters because that reflected in Tolstoy's own life. So there were aspects of the story that I was really interested in and excited to see how how they um, how he explored it. And I was enjoying it. I wanted to I could I'm gonna go more into this, but I guess just yeah. basically um I was liking it, but the ending I was just so like okay, like I I I appreciated it, but at the same time, I was just like, wow, what an ending. <laughs> so without going into too much detail, I really enjoyed it because it's Tolstoy and mm. I love Tolstoy. He's my favorite writer, as all of you know. Um, but I think the more that I'm reading from him, same thing with Dickens and other all writers that I read more from. Obviously, you get more picky with what you like and what you don't like from them. So I think with Tolstoy, I am figuring out the aspects of his writing and his style that I jive more with and also, you know, prefer and don't prefer, if that means. Yeah. yeah. What did you give it? Did you give it three? I gave it three stars oh, because okay. I didn't not like it, but I didn't love it. So I felt yeah. like it was a nice even ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, me as well. Wait, you gave me both two? I did. Okay, so oh, wow. let, me, let me explain. Let me explain. First, okay. I read... Okay, how do I even talk about family happiness? I really liked reading it, actually. It was like... Because I haven't been... You guys know I haven't been really just having a good time with Tolstoy. Um, but then I was just, like, really into family happiness, even though I wasn't really... Like, I really liked reading it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I felt like it was so readable, and it kind of felt like a proto Anna Karenina, almost. <laughs> um like with Anna and um, her husband. Rocky. No. Oh, Karenin. Yes, Karenin. Mm -hmm. um, so that was cool. But then, like you said, like we got to the end and I was like, what even was this? And so like it was such a frustrating, such a frustrating experience because I was like so just into it. And I was like really enjoying his writing and what he was doing in the characters. But then the whole thing, which we'll just go into, it was just so frustrating to have that like you know, you really like half of it, but then the actual content is just not not a fan of it. Yeah. Um, what did someone say? Someone said, okay, yeah, I gave both of them two stars. Mm -hmm. Did you give, Poly what did you give Polykushka three stars as well? I give 3.5, so yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Oh, let's yeah. see. You Literally. Interestingly, but I did also title my diary entry about this when Tolstoy gets kicked in the couch. Oh. Um, yeah, so those are kind of my thoughts on family happiness, just broadly. Okay. Then Polly Kushka, like, I, I hope you have a lot to say because I have literally, <laughs> I'm, guys, I have nothing to say about Polly Kushka. Like, my thoughts are no thoughts. I have a lot to say, actually, by, okay, about okay, Polly Kushka good. because good. I really, I really did enjoy Polly Kushka. Um, yeah, it was, Polykushka was in between like a three and a four for me. And I was like, you know what, 3.5, I can't decide. Okay. Um, I was also talking about this in my recent wrap up where I was like, I was talking about the books that I read in April and I wasn't giving star ratings because recently and for a while I have just felt really like conflicted about star mm -hmm. ratings. And I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way, but yeah. So 
especially with short stories too and by an author that I love it's like so hard to like what do I compare it to do I compare it to his other books that I you know I feel like I can't really compare Family Happiness and Polykushka to like Anna Karenina but that's mm-hmm. exactly what we're doing so yeah. um I find it a, an interesting challenge um so oh Family has with five stars awesome okay that's interesting a precursor for Natasha and Andre okay I could, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. Because um, Masha's like naivety and how that relates to, you know, Andre has been through a lot in his own marriage and loss and everything. So I could, I could definitely see that. Um, is family happiness something I could start with? I don't know. Like we always just scream at you guys to start with Anna Karenina, but. Yeah. Um, or if you want to start with his short stories, Penguin Little Black Classics has a little collection of Tolstoy. It's called, um, how much land does a man need and it has how much land does a man need and what men live by in it and I started with those and I fell in love with Tolstoy that way and then I read Anna Karenina so I think that if you want to start with something short I would recommend those two short stories um but if you want to just dive into Anna Karenina we always like Emma said recommend doing that family happiness it's really funny because like I don't know. I wouldn't say that. And I do, (laughs) I do have a quote from Tolstoy. Someone commented this on um, one of my videos as well, but that like he himself just absolutely hated it later. And he was like, wait, I want to find it. It's such disgraceful filth that I can't come to my senses from the shame. And I don't think anything else. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. He didn't want to write after it. He actually, I read that he intended for it to be a full novel and then you know, he wrote it and it was kind of like, okay, that's it. And it was just a short story, but I find it really funny that. A disgraceful film. film. <laughs> disgraceful film. <laughs> like, I, I'm giving up my writing career. But if he did, then we wouldn't have his other amazing works. So thank goodness he didn't. Yeah. Family yeah. Three stars. I th- yeah, I feel like we're all kind of in between. So. Yeah, the ending, I was just, anyway, okay. Yeah, um, the ending, I was like, it, it was a realistic ending, and I understood, because, like, that, well, I feel like, okay, are we going to go into it more? Yeah, I feel let's like, get into okay, it. Okay, okay. Um, uh, should we go in order, or should we just keep going from what we're saying? I literally don't have an order this time, I'm just. Okay, great, that's fine. Um, I feel like people, so basically the whole synopsis of this book is, mm-hmm. like, this, oh, yeah, young sorry. Yeah, this young 17 year old girl um here I have it written down just so I can like speed through it um Tulsa is exploring how romantic relationships between a young girl age 17 at the start of the story and an older man who I believe is a cousin um he's 36 at the start of the story changes over time and throughout the novel there or throughout their short story they're trying to define what happiness and family happiness is and um it's basically them starting with this infatuation of of having romantic feelings for one another and then as their journeys through their relationship go on it kind of deteriorates and turns into unhappiness <laughs> yes <laughs> yes um you're not wrong but um, <laughs> I'm happy <to> yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and I think that in some cases, especially in in history in classics, when you have I don't know I I've found that a lot in in classic literature where you ha- you start in a relationship in one way and then you end in end in another way. Oftentimes, people let's say it's in a re- relationship and you you're dating you know, you have the honeymoon stage and you're in love with each other and then it kind of turns and develops into different things. And sometimes whether you end up breaking up or not, I just, I found that in, it was a more exaggerated way of showing reality, I think. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. That makes sense now, like thinking about it in that way, that it was just so exaggerated. Um, Mm -hmm. And like someone described it, I think, one scholar literally said that it's supposed to be about the way romantic passion gradually deteriorates into something completely different. And like, Mm -hmm. I do understand that, but I think the way that it was done and especially the way that Tolstoy, just Tolstoy is just Tolstoy in family happiness was just not something that I would say as like, oh, this is like a good depiction of reality or, oh, I really like this exploration or, oh, this like 
this is a worthwhile um, example of that deterioration. And I don't think that's always true. Um, mm -hmm. And especially to portray it as like, you know what, this is going to happen regardless. I don't think it's exactly like, I totally get what you're saying, but yeah. I do think it is a huge, like you're saying, an exaggeration. Um, yeah. And I definitely don't think it's the case for all relationships, of course. Um, but yeah, I do exactly. think it, you know, yeah. Yeah, the critic said deteriorates, but I, I that's what it, I don't know. And like the romantic passion, like at the end of it, and obviously we're going to spoil it and stuff, but they're just, yeah. is completely different, right? Because at the beginning, yeah. they're so, I mean, they are situated, but like, it's not really, it's not like mm -hmm. over the top or whatever. It's just like a new relationship. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And I think so to talk about the ending um, where I guess I found it interesting where like she went from like wanting to serve her husband and like and love her husband and it went from her to just like oh okay well I'm going to you know my family happiness my happiness is like being the mother to my children and you know whatever to my husband I found that slightly funny because I'm like oh, okay you're just, like, <laughs> you just aren't even going to try to love him um yeah. so yeah I just I think that I don't know I think that there was a lot there is a lot to think about. And I think that that's what Tolstoy does best is make you question a lot of things and make you evaluate different types of relationships and, and bring these topics to the forefront to discuss so and to think about. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like in this one, like there, I didn't, I wasn't really, he wasn't like, hey, have questions. He was like, hey, this is what's up. Mm. But it's I, not though. Yeah. Um, even at the beginning, like even in the beginning when they were falling in love, I still thought it was incredibly just an unhealthy depiction and so condescending like basically what happens is that she's 17 and he's like the what is he he manages her estates because he was friends with her father um yeah i think, I think he was yeah. a distant cousin okay yeah yeah something like that um and then basically they fall in love but she starts to she literally says so many quotes and like i have a different edition this one's called actually happy ever after this is a complete side note oh. um, in this edition, which is strange because I think like the actual literal translation from Russian is family happiness, if I'm not mistaken. But um, she says that she just starts to get rid, <laughs> literally get rid of everything, any thought, any opinion, any hobby that he doesn't like. And basically she becomes, she just becomes him. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was just like so exaggerated and especially coming from her point of view and like this being the first um, perspective from the point of view view of a woman we've had from Tolstoy I was like is this is this serious are we gonna like discuss this is this something that he's gonna critique or are we gonna have like an actual discussion about this mm -hmm. it's a big truck it's a very big truck <laughs> um but he didn't he never did and that was like was that I did not I was just like is this real um and then the ending I was like well I guess it must have been because it just went from bad to worse um and in the end like you said she's like why don't you just she literally says why don't you kill me or lock me up because I'm not being, what does she even say? I'm not being the kind of wife you want or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't there's, know. there's a comment um, from Inga and it says, I think the ending is very realistic. All stages of love um, through the love of your children. Uh, you find, call me. I just lost my place. Um, you find a new kind of love to your husband where I think I think that's just something that's different to each relationship and I think it's very true because the love changes from one thing to another and it develops and it's like Tolstoy's topic or discussion of how how happiness changes and develops into different things throughout your life depending on the stages of the life that you're in yeah. um, like young love marriage going through that marriage having children i think it all it it turns into those different things and i think that it's really interesting how he touches on that but also i feel like i understand what you're saying at the same time because we do have this main character that really just and and i see this a lot in literature written by men um classic literature is the woman always trying to like do her best to make her husband happy and yes. not you know like besides I would say besides Anna Karenina because I feel like she's like 
screw Karenin, I'm going to do what I want. Um, so I think that it's really interesting to to see those differences, especially from the yeah. same writer comparing family happiness and Masha to Anna. Yeah. See, I would say that, like, um, that is a valid point. But I think in regarding family happiness, I don't think we actually, I didn't see that. Like, I think the, the book or the short story, it just ends before we actually see any interaction with her and her husband and her children. Um, mm -hmm. And like even throughout the novel, like she has her first child and she is at that point where she's entering into society and she says, this brought about literally no change in my life. I didn't care. I don't want to spend time with the child. This baby is so boring. Um, I don't want anything to do with him. We don't even know the child's name, do we? I don't know. I don't um, even remember. But then I think, I think the novel or the short story ends right before like we get to see that because it ends with her being like you said oh mm -hmm. i'm gonna transform our love into like a new a new love and i'm gonna love him in this way because he's the father of my children and all that stuff mm -hmm. but i don't think like i never got to see that um yeah. and it was just more of her being like oh this is what must happen this is what's mm -hmm. what has to happen what's going to happen but um i think it was unsatisfactory in that way as well because we never actually saw that um and I'm like is that gonna happen for you guys because it seems like your relationship is kind of shit honestly like yeah, yeah. I don't know but yeah. I get what you're saying that is a totally valid point mm -hmm. um I do have written down uh, let me see if I can find it um <laughs> yeah, <that was. laughs> oh god um sorry one sec yeah, well, we're going to talk about this, too. That was my main issue with this one, mm -hmm. I have to say. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand. I understand exactly what you mean, and I do agree to a point, but at the same time, I do feel like I feel like that's the charm of Tolstoy at the same time. Like, whether you agree or disagree, I think it is interesting to see his point of view and you as the reader, you can you can take it and you can form your own opinions. You don't always have to agree. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he expects everyone to agree with his views um, because that's just unrealistic, you know? Like, not everyone's going to agree with everyone else. But I do think that because what I love about classic literature is it gives you a window to a time and a place and a perspective that you wouldn't have without it. Um, and... I think I value it more as something for me to think about as a modern reader rather than um, he's yeah. just trying to change my viewpoint. You yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say before is I was thinking about how, how Masha and Sergei in Family Happiness I think it was based on misunderstandings that they never really, especially because she was 17 years old, yeah. she never really understood herself and what she wanted. And I don't think we are in a time and place and time period that a lot of young girls could really think for themselves and figure out exactly what they wanted for their own lives because they weren't given the opportunity to. And Sergei, I think, misunderstood her just as he... I just, I feel like their relationship was based on misunderstanding to the point where it's inevitable for it to not work out because I don't think that they had an established understanding of who they were as individuals. No, yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, which I, I always find really interesting the way that he, the way that he explores those topics of, yeah. of how two people come together and, and mesh. Or don't yeah, no, I found that like the best part, honestly, when they were like just disagreeing and not having a good time. <laughs> it just it felt so real and it made me so miserable. And I was like, guys, just talk to each other, like just yeah. speak. But he's just I don't even know how old he is. He's like 30 something. He's 36 um, at the start. Yeah. He's still kind of quite young and he wants to just live in his countryside mansion or whatever, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But she's yeah. like, See, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to go do things. Yeah. <laughs> But even then, like, even when they do go to Petersburg, it all could have worked out fine. But except, like you said, they, there's no communication. They don't talk to each other. They assume. Um, mm -hmm. They misunderstand. And I just felt that to be such a good representation and very, like, it felt like I was, like, just really there. Um, and it was very affecting. But then 
the the bookends of this book were so weak and such a letdown. And I think that is where, like we were talking about earlier, Tolstoy is just so there. Um, mm. And you know that I hate that so I much. Know, I know. I'm you trying. Know I'm trying. trying. <laughs> um, oh, I just hate it so much. Um, but I do agree with what you're saying. Like, I'm not saying, oh, he's trying to, well, I mean, he is trying to push his view on absolutely everything, but I know that he doesn't expect you to agree with him. I know that he, to an extent, wants you to have a conversation about these things. But mm. I think I take more issue with it because I don't enjoy reading a novel like that's not the reason I really go to a novel for example just to I feel like we need to bring some Dickens we got to bring Dickens back into the Tolstoy and Tolstoy back into it. <laughs> um I never I really never feel that way in Dickens novels and I think Barnaby Rudge is a great example because um I think if Tolstoy were writing Barnaby Rudge he would 100% be inserting his own voice exactly like he did in War and Peace and like telling you exactly his views and why history and the categorizing and the taking and the remembering of history is just not done in the right way. But with Dickens' Barnaby Rudge, he is just like, hey, this is what happened. I'm not going to really side too much with one or the other. Um, and that's kind of what I want. I don't want, I don't want him there. I don't want him watching me. I don't want him watching me read his book. Mm. I just like feel it, you know? I like yeah. literally feel that he's <laughs> watching me from the pages and that's not what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I completely understand what you mean. Yeah. Um, do I do I agree though? I feel like no. I agree, I agree to a point, um, but then I also feel like I do like when I can disagree with with the author and yeah, and I guess yeah. explore that um, because I often don't agree with Tolstoy's views. No. I mean. I feel like it's quite it's quite hard to as a modern person, especially a, a woman. Um, yeah. But I do think that that's what makes an interesting reading experience, and also like seeing. Yeah. How, do you know what I mean? Yeah, actually, this is it exactly as well. You just put that so well that he's scared of his readers seeing things in his writings that he didn't put in himself, mm -hmm. which is why he explains so much of his views. Um, and I think that is part of it. And I think. Like now that you're saying that, I think it's part of that self, um, not self-confidence that comes across. And he's like, I don't want to be misinterpreted. I don't want to be whatever. But the fact is, when you're a writer, like that's exactly what's going to happen. You can't like I just think he can he tries to control too much of what people think about what he's writing. Um, and that comes across to me as just very not self-indulgent, but definitely just paranoid of what people are going to think. Um, I, I do. I do have to point out that Russian, yeah. Russian censorship um, yeah. Yeah. was very, very strong in the time that he was writing. So, like, that is quite understandable. Yeah. Um, and I think that I think that it is important to, especially at the time and the place that he's writing in, to think about those things. Because I feel like for Dickens, he didn't really have to worry about no. No. the reception of his books other than the fact that, are people going to find this entertaining or not? Meanwhile, I think Tolstoy's whole view was more, um, how is this going to affect us politically and how is this going to affect Russia and the view of Russia and the Russian people that will be reading it? Um, so I do think that their approaches to writing were very different and their intents mm -hmm. um, of why they write those things. And I think that's interesting to compare them though, because we have these two 19th century authors doing very different things um but also i think a lot of i think a lot of the charm does is in the is in their differences i guess yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah okay you guys are saying so many good things oh my god as always you guys always say great things <laughs> to instruct and better people to entertain mm -hmm. the chickens yeah yeah, see, I just have a problem with that instruction. <laughs> um, but I do know what you're saying. But also with the censors, like, yes, especially when he's writing stuff, like what we've read, like his major novels and stuff. But when, especially it comes to family happiness, when it's just like a psychological study, um, I'm like, why do you still have to be so there? Mm -hmm. I guess. Is that, okay. Over explains his agenda, yes. I'm sorry. I should really take that one back. That's <laughs> she senses his presence at all times. 
Mm, yes, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's where like my point with like the whole Tolstoy realism, like everyone loves it because it's so realistic. It is, but then sometimes they just say things and I'm like, I know that's not the character talking, like you're not fully a person. And especially in family happiness, I felt this the most, I think in places like War and Peace and even Anna Karenina to an extent, I barely felt that except towards the end of Anna. Mm -hmm. But family happiness, I just felt like there's so much potential. And like, I see this outline of you guys as such a full person. And like, I really felt like I knew Masha and Sergei. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I disagreed with them, like I really felt like they were real touchable people, but then they just kind of started to change and be transformed into these mouthpieces for Tolstoy. And like, that's where I take, like that's where I find that that realism just doesn't extend all the way through because Tolstoy like literally stops at himself. And he's like, hi. <laughs> Remember me, the person that wrote Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, someone Adam asks, um, "Did I just say the Russian people will be yeeting?" No, he said reading. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe they're yeeting too. Yeah. Um, what else do I have to say about this? I don't know. Just that like I really had a love hate relationship with this one. It wasn't it wasn't all hate. Like I really loved the beginning. I loved her country house and the gardens and stuff like that. Um, I think that was beautiful. But mm -hmm. but overall, um, let me see if I just have anything else. I'm mm -hmm. to um, so we were talking about um, on a Skype call recently. Emma was saying that. Um, she was mentioning that uh, that Tolstoy's relationship and marriage with his wife was kind of similar in the age difference between um, Masha and Sergei. So when he married Sofia, it was in 1862, and he was 34 and she was 18. But um, Family Happiness was written in 1859, so it was quite a few years before they were married. So, okay. so I'm thinking. Is it just a coincidence that he wrote a story that had a similar structure um, and and turn of events as his own marriage um, that he captured it in this story? I don't know if it's. I mean, it. Ha I guess it's not a coincidence. No. Because yeah. Do you remember when we were talking before about Tolstoy in general? But he had that relationship with some girl of his aunt's house or something I think she was a young I don't know if she was working there but then she got thrown out and she died I don't know if this is any relation I just saw someone say that it was about his wife but if it's like that those yeah. years that you said then I mean did they know each other then I don't imagine so I don't really don't know I want to say they were distant relatives um but this is when my Tolstoy knowledge needs to be double checked um yeah. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but I did find that really interesting, how, you yeah. know, the age difference and the turn of, turn of events of the marriage. It's not exactly the same, um, yeah. but I find it interesting that there there is some reflection in it. And yeah. then um, something that I just want to talk about with writing, just in mm -hmm. general with him, I do find that even though his books are in translation for us because obviously we can't read Russian. We wish we could. Um, I find his stories and his writing in general very readable. And I never I never find myself getting lost in Tolstoy's writing. Whereas in Dickens, there are a lot of times where I just find myself going, wait, where am I again? What's happening? Kind of like questioning, questioning where I am in this story. And I guess that pulls me out of it and takes me away from it. Um, I don't know if you completely agree. I feel like every time we talk about uh, this, I don't yeah. think that maybe this is just a Carolyn problem. <laughs> I, think, I think for me, it's a little bit of the opposite, but I think that's just because it's not in every soul story book, but I think it's just when like I start, I think it's just totally biased because I just start slipping when I'm like, I don't care that much. 
Um, in Polykushka, I was <laughs> not confused. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't like Polykushka. I just think I wasn't paying enough attention, and that's 100% on me. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't feel that way about it. I know what you're saying, though, because Dickens is so rambly, but also Tolstoy yeah. is really rambly. Um, in, I feel like there's two places. different types of rambling, though. <laughs> um, in War and Peace, for example. Yeah. But um, uh, I really like Emma's comment. She said, yeah, Dickens is like, remember this person? And I'm like, who? <laughs> That's me. That's me. Especially because they have such crazy or interesting names, too. I'm often like, I don't even remember. I don't I don't even remember that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whereas I feel like Dickens is very like, we're doing this, we're doing that. A talking chair, a talking raven. Um, this character just, you know, like did something really funny and then we're here and then we're there. And I'm like, whoa, hold up, buddy. Where are we? Yeah. <laughs> And Tolstoy is more like, this happened, and now we're going to go here, and then I think this, and then this character said this, and I think it's just a bit more easy to follow, um, at least for me. So I just wanted to bring that up to talk about writing. Yeah. Um, and then for characters, I think we talked about everything that I wanted to say about characters. Okay. Um, Something I was thinking about, but like I really... Mm, okay, I think Tolstoy for me, like he doesn't, I just get lost sometimes because I honestly find it, I don't want to say boring because it's really, that's not a smart thing to say, but I mean just, it, it gets very dry after a while to me, certain sections of his books and certain books in totality that I just, I don't know, do you ever feel that way? That it's just like I... I don't know what it is. Okay, is this? Here it is. It's this couple. <laughs> here it is. Everyone. Here it is. Um, it's this coupled with like I feel this weird distance. I wrote it in my notes, but it literally just says, "Why?" Um, I feel this weird distance with Tolstoy novels. I feel like I'm not. Mm. I feel like I'm not there, and I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm not. I feel like I can't picture myself there. I can't picture myself with them. Whereas reading Dickens, I literally feel like I'm in the room I feel like I can see it I feel like when I close the book and I step away from Dickens I can still see everything but when I do that with Tolstoy I like I just can't I feel like it's there's this wall between me and the world and the book that just doesn't exist there for Dickens and I'm wondering if that wall is like Tolstoy himself like we're talking about or I don't know I don't know if you feel this way I don't think you do but yeah. I don't want I don't want to feel this way Carolyn Why do I, feel this? I know I know um I think I felt that way a little bit with certain Dickens books. Actually, okay. Okay. Where, where I I'm I'm entertained, but I feel like I can't really put myself in the book. Whereas I feel like with Tolstoy, he just puts me right in the story. Like, I feel like I am one of the side characters that's watching everything happening. You know, in um, in Palikushka, we have a lot of the um, the the serfs or the people working on the land that the woman owns. Um, and I felt like I was just one of those, one of those people watching everything happening. Mm. And in family happiness, I did, I did feel more like, um, like an objective viewer and, um, and not really in the story. So I feel like it depends on, I think it just depends on the story and depends on the book. Yeah. But, um, but saying that though, when I read Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist and Great Expectations, I didn't have that issue. I did really feel like I was in the story and it was coming to life. And But for other Dickens books, I had a problem where I couldn't really connect to it and I couldn't really put myself in the story. Um, and I felt disconnected, kind of the, the same feeling that you're describing with Tolstoy. So I really think it depends on the book and the reader. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't think that there's like... I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to to go about this or to read them or to view them or anything, um, but I find that I find that interesting. So we will see if that changes over time, though, because I think the the more I read um, Dickens' later works, I'm going to ha I'm going to have that distance closed and I'm going to feel more yeah. connected to them. Um, with Tolstoy, though, I think it is going to be a back and forth because. His short stories, obviously, 
are all very different. And I think that it it's going to depend also because they are short stories, you're going to have a different feeling as opposed to a novel. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that that's what I was trying to say before about like, yeah, so much going on so much, you know, um, like, wild frenzy but but entertaining wild frenzy to the point that I'm like what is happening you know yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. anyway should we talk about polykushka like I really don't know what it is about the distance thing I really want to okay we, we, we need to unmask this we need to <laughs> I, know, I know um okay should I do you want me to talk a little bit about polykushka yes, please okay <laughs> Okay, um, so Polykushka was writ written in 1863, um, which, like I said, the, um, he married Sofia in 1862, so this is a year after his marriage, just to put it into perspective. Um, it opens with a discussion between the lady um, who owns the land that we are on in the story and her estate manager about conscription. So um, conscription is required military service and in the 1850s, it was about 12, plus, um, 12 years plus three years in the reserve. Um, and to a lot of people, it was seen as a kind of death sentence where a lot of people didn't return after doing this military service. And it was just a hindrance to their lives. And it was something that really changed mm. the course of their lives. Um, and so... Um, in the story, they had to choose, or she basically had the, the final say, to choose a certain number of men to go into this military service. Um, and the estate manager is saying to send Polykushka because he is he is seen as being um, a thief. And I, I think he was he was trained to to look after the horses by a man. That was also into thievery so he just picked up his his thieving traits and couldn't help himself when he saw like a um random things around he just like had this compulsion to pick things up and, and take them and so he was seen as this untrustworthy thief and so the estate manager is saying send Polykushka because he's a thief and we don't need him here um but the lady of the land is saying um, I am I am a, a, a woman of God or a child of God, and I want to give him a chance to let him be forgiven and to prove himself that he can be better than his thieving ways. And um, and instead of sending him for the conscription, she uh, s sends him into town to collect a large sum of money, kind of a test to see if he can and if he is worthy to to stay and to to turn away from the sin of thieving. Um, and I, I found it really interesting because like in How Much Land Does a Man Need and What Men Live By, and a little bit in Family Happiness, they act almost like fables where there is this moral and there is like, um, I guess something to learn from the, from the characters of, um, I don't know, I, I'll go into more detail in this in a second, but I think ultimately the story is about, oh, it's based on real events. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. Um, but I think it's ultimately about societal pressures, whether that's the pressure of the military, the burden of money, trying to prove oneself to yourself and to other people of, I can, I can be better than who I've been and keeping away from temptation. We all know that Tolstoy had, uh, very religious opinions, um, and the pressures that people put on themselves. And yeah. let's, let's see, um, Polycushion is only essentially tragic characters who lie under the... Yeah, that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that a lot of it is about the fate of the characters and how the different things that they do result to... Um, to an end that they can't avoid. And I think that what I found so tragic was that Polykushka, we get to a point where Polykushka feels like he has no other out except for, um, I'm just gonna spoil it, except for suicide. And so I think that it's interesting when he's given this opportunity to prove that he has changed and that he can be better. 
um, he ends up losing losing the money, um, and then, and he doesn't want people to think that he uh, took it or or spent it. So he just thinks that this is like I I, I have no other out. Um, and I found it so tragic because he has a family, he has children, and the way that his family and children are described is so heartbreaking. They live in um, this, I think it's some kind of outhouse on the land, and I just, I found it so incredibly heartbreaking, and also interesting the way that he discussed these, these mm-hmm. things. Um, yeah. Yes. And what are your what are your thoughts? <laughs> do you have any do you have any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, no. <laughs> no, I do, I do. Um I think yes, everything you guys are saying, yes. Um, but for me, like you're saying it reads more like a fable or a moral, but then based on, I don't know how much of it is based on the true story. I didn't actually know that until right now either. But um, at the end, I was just like, okay. Um, It does feel very suffocating and inescapable. And like you're saying, um, yes, self-fulfilling prophecy-esque. But I just, I really didn't, like it literally, I just, this is literally what I, experience reading it is just this nonsensical silence that I was just like what was this um I don't think I don't think <laughs> um I don't know. and this too this as well is what I was thinking the whole time and we've seen this since um his first book childhood boyhood youth where he does mm. write in a way about certain people and he doesn't really examine them from the point of view of them but rather from the point of view of obviously himself, Tolstoy was a very rich aristocrat, um, but it did feel very patronizing and it did feel like it was engaging with a lot of stereotypes about serfs. And then the whole um, end where the story starts to shift after Polykushka is dead and it starts to focus on the envelope because um, Mm. another man who's, was it his son or his brother who ended up um, conscripted in the army in place of Polykushka? I think it was his nephew. His nephew, okay. he finds the envelope and he's like so excited because there's so much money and the mistress is so distraught and she's like, you know what, just take it. Mm-hmm. I don't want the money. It's cursed. Um, I don't want anything to do with it. It's resulted in someone's death. And in the beginning, that love is like, okay, that's amazing. I am rich. But then he starts to kind of experience this like spooky haunting. From, is it? It's like from Polykushka's ghost almost. Um, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, you know what, I don't want this money either, so then I'm just going to go, what does he do? He spends it, I think, to get his nephew out of Mm -hmm. army, right? Um, And then the book just kind of ends, and I I honestly, like, what was the moral? Can, what do you guys think? Because I don't don't have things. (laughs) What do you think the moral is? (laughs) Um, Like, I truly don't think the money is the issue here. I, I don't I think the money was a catalyst. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think it was the overarching moral in a sense. I do feel like I think what we like what we were talking about before, it's really a lot about faith and a lot about um I don't know, this sounds so generic, but like the things that happen to us and how how the things that happen to us result to our ends. Um and how I guess we react to the different things that happen to us, but that is just life as a whole. Um, and I don't know. I, it's like, it's so hard to explain. Yeah. I don't know. Um, because it is, it is so tragic though, the way that it happens because like Polly Kushka is literally just trying to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it ends up like, you know, even when you try to do the right thing, like, yeah. It's not gonna, you're just gonna die. It's not gonna end yeah. in a good way for you. And I'm, I, I wanted it to focus more on like that suffocating um, atmosphere and like the whole problem with literally owning people and having serfs and all that stuff, which obviously Tolstoy, I don't know when in his life he turned away from. Um, Cause it's not something that we've, I feel like 
have really, really discussed in a Tolstoy work yet. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I thought Polikushka was actually going to be more about that, but in the end, like, it really didn't feel like that to me. It just felt like despair, which is fair because it's <laughs> yeah. Russian, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand what you mean. Um, people are, let's see. Yeah, Adam said Tolstoy was a count, right? Dostoevsky was an um, ex, uh, ex clerical manager, uh, gambler. No, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Um, <laughs> uh, the difference is not in right poverty. Um, sorry. Yeah, I think, I think you can tell, you can really tell the difference between who understood the different classes and, and who had a different view of the different classes. So I completely understand what you mean. Um, and I do think that that's, that's the beauty of reading from different writers, especially different writers that are writing from the same culture or from the same country or um, from different viewpoints, because I think it gives you uh, a nice, well-rounded view of how things were. And um, yeah, I did... I didn't really, I didn't really think about, I didn't feel like he was being patronizing to um, the serfs or, or the lower class, but I, I can see what you mean. Um, yeah, but um, I feel like Tolstoy had a lot of feelings and no one to talk to. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Um, let's see, for me, Polikushka was a, like a second chance story that ended tragically. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Reading Tolstoy gave me depression. <laughs> that is literally what happened. Um, had a lot of feelings and no one to talk to is why I joined the YouTube. <laughs> literally me. Oh my God. Oh, that's oh, how our friendship boy. began, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> we both had no one to talk to about the books we were reading. We're like, hey, you want to talk? <laughs> yeah, see, this, yeah, because that's the thing. Like, I don't, I would never have picked this book up. I would have just put it down if we weren't reading it for the book club. In terms of something I want to read, this is so not it. Um, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. I don't know. This is going to be a really interesting uh, two and a half more years. <laughs> I'm reading Tolstoy <laughs> because we're going to see how, how Emma feels about the rest of Tolstoy. Um, okay, let me see if I have anything else that I wanted to talk about. Um, Again, I just felt like I was able to move through Polikushka really quickly. I didn't feel like I had problems following it. It's kind of the same thing that I was saying before. Um, and also what I like about Tolstoy's short stories, and I feel like I find this with a lot of Russian literature, you never really know how it's going to end. Like I, I often know that it's going to have an ending that either will make me feel upset or... Um, or is something that I won't expect. And I do like that. I feel like with Dickens, he can be slightly predictable in, yeah. like, I, I agree and I disagree with, with my own statement. Sometimes okay. I feel like Dickens oh, yeah. can yeah. be unpredictable, but I do feel like Tolstoy always keeps me on the edge of my seat. And I'm like, well, I have no clue how this is, how this is going to pan out because um, while following Polikushka, I was, thinking okay well is he gonna is he gonna take the money is he not gonna take the money like um and I knew the second that he brought up um him trying to like uh keep the the envelope safe wherever he was putting it I was like oh no oh no he's he's gonna lose it and 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 then I I didn't know how, where it was gonna go from there so I think what I like is that Tolstoy always keeps me engaged whereas sometimes with Dickens I do feel like not that I, not that I don't care where he's going to take me, but I, I, I guess it's just sometimes it's not there for me. Um, that interest of like, of like, oh, what is he going to do next? You know, but, but that's only with certain works. Like I, I didn't feel that way in with Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickel, and Nicholas Nickleby or Great Expectations. But yeah, okay, yeah. 
But that's why I agree and disagree with my own statement. <laughs> yes, I think I don't know how things are going to end. But like, I think at this point, I am so tired of literally seeing the exact same things in not not one or two in every single Tolstoy thing that I've read. It's always the same issues that are harping that he's harping on. It's always the same, like literally the same main character. Obviously, they're different, but they are all so incredibly. Oh, God. <laughs> Just like, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they are think- kind of the same prototype of the same person, and that person is Tolstoy. <laughs> Do you think that's because. Well, is that realistic? Because at that time, maybe a lot of men in those positions did think that way. Like, could you that's say that. I'm saying, I'm saying like. Um, they all keep a diary. They all keep a journal about how they're going to save the world and turn it into something good. They all have the same exact political alignment and interest. They all talk almost the same way. They all have the same, like, um, I don't know. It's just so strange because I've almost like marked out sentences about, um, oh, who is it in childhood, boyhood, youth, Nikolenka, um, Nikolenka and Levin and, Pierre and they almost say the exact same things and they almost describe their childhood in the exact same way and that could be because like you're saying um that's how it is but like I don't I don't think so I think they're the way that the way that I see them is I feel like they're variations on a theme like yeah 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 there there is you know there is one we have Tolstoy behind each of these characters and that can be felt but I do feel like they each bring their own um their own selves to the story and how and how that reflects to the different stories because I feel like something about Tolstoy is even though we do have um (laughs) sorry the last comment (laughs) cracking me up (laughs) um um, I think that it, it changes with each story. And I think that with Tolstoy, yeah. even though we have variations on a theme and we do have this one theme, I do think that they're very, they're handled very differently. Like I, I've had, I've had a different, I've had a different feeling with each work that I've read by him. And, and sometimes I feel like with Dickens, I, you you have that that same feeling of yeah. oh, I'm being entertained by Dickens, um, whereas I think Tolstoy is making you think about things differently and making you feel things differently. Does mm-hmm. every time yeah. I talk, every time I try to prove a point, I feel like I make no sense. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Okay. You're good, you're good. Um, yeah, that's kind of what we're saying, but like we're talking about it in different ways, right? Like you're like you're getting something new out of it, um, mm-hmm. whereas I don't feel as though. I am. I do think it's really interesting to trace, like, and I do appreciate being able to trace Tolstoy himself throughout the characters. And obviously not every single character is that much autobiographical of Tolstoy himself. But Mm -hmm. I do think it does make me question a lot the novels that I'm reading um, in terms of their enjoyability, in terms of their like credibility of each character and how much, like just how close some of his characters truly are but it is like it is nice to see Tolstoy grow from um the very naive um Nikolenka to mm-hmm. um see no actually no that's the thing that's the uh, objection <laughs> <laughs> in resurrection I take it back uh, <laughs> in resurrection uh what's his face I don't even know his name I really feel like it didn't change that much because he says almost the exact same things that Tolstoy's first character said um and I do I do think it comes from good intentions mostly yeah I don't know maybe this is something this is a little project we'll have I'll go back and like I'll look at all of the people yes yeah 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 um I think I think that might be everything I wanted to say about Polikushka. Um, yeah, that's true. Who has the better beard? I think the <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. Dickens Dickens beard just just the No, why? it doesn't do it for me. Why? I at least Tolstoy has the has the whole thing. You know? True. True. But that that's that's the real question. That's the real winner of the debate. The better beard. <laughs> the cinematic universe, yes. Yes. Um, oh, should oh shoot, should I post? Oh the... yes, yes. Um, while you do that, do you want me to share some quotes? Yes. Okay. So the quote that I have from Family Happiness is the one that I kept seeing every time I did research on Family Happiness. Everyone kept quoting this, but I I loved it so much, and I thought, okay, well, someone has to quote it in the debate, so I will. Um. So it says, I have lived through much, and now I think I have found what is needed for happiness. A quiet, secluded life in the country with the possibility of being useful to people to whom it is easy to do good and who are not accustomed to have it done to them. Then work, which one hopes may be of some use, then rest, nature, books, music, love for one's neighbor, such is my idea of happiness. And then on top of it all, you for a mate and children perhaps, what more can the heart of man desire? And I, I sort of feel like that's Tolstoy in a nutshell, um, because I think that that's, that's his view of happiness and not, and I think that's just, without him trying to change your opinion, without him putting in his views, I think that at the end of the day, that that's what he, that that's what he desires. Um, and I, I don't know. I thought that it was a very sweet sentiment. So. Hmm. Um, Do you have family happiness? I did have one. It was really okay. funny because I had ordered, I didn't think I had um, family happiness because oh, okay. I didn't realize happy ever after and family happiness were the same story. Okay. So I ordered a really bad copy of it off of Amazon and then, then, then I reorganized my books and I was like, what the hell is this? And it was family happiness. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I can find the quote, but it's the one where they're walking through the garden and they're talking about the magic, the magic wall of nature. Yes. Um, yes. I, I don't know. That. But it is that one. Lovely. Very lovely. Um, do you have one for Polykushka or no? Okay. <laughs> I do. So I will, I will okay. get it. Oh, also the poll is up on my channel. Oh, okay. Under the community. Oh. Yes, yes. Um, so if you guys go on Emma's channel, the community tab, the poll should be there. Um, okay, so the quote I have for Polykushka, um, it says this, okay, it's very short. Um, be bold enough to risk mistakes and dreams, as the German saying goes, but this applies less to poets than to doctors of horses and of men. And I just, I liked that be bold enough to risk mistakes and dreams. Um, I think that, I think that um, when you're trying to go about your life and, and you're trying to do the right thing, I think that learning from your mistakes and risking failure is sort of, I don't know. I, just, I feel like that's what he's trying to say. Um, is it's something that I, I always like to remind myself is that you know we learn from everything that we that we do and as long as you're trying your best to to like live your life and and, and pursue what what makes you happy um risk risk mistakes for your dreams I just I don't know I, I will say that that part does come before he butchers a horse by accident so maybe don't risk that one but um, okay but yes. <laughs> Why did I not remember that? I don't know. I just like that he's a horse doctor, but he's not a doctor. Yes. Like yeah. he just he just cons people into thinking, yep. fix your horse, and then they die. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna steal your stuff. Oh, we did it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that um, was okay. Um, Dickens or Tolstoy? We have Tolstoy at fifty six percent. Mm. Is this the month Dickens finally wins? No, I don't think I that. Wait, where is it? 
Team Toaster. <laughs> Carolyn, are we still reading? Calendar of Wisdom. I I didn't even I don't even have a copy. I know. <laughs> I know. Are you still reading it? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Oh, I hated it. So it was op it, it is optional. Um so you I guys don't have to read it. it. If you have it, you can. Um maybe I should read it since since I'm Team Tolstoy and maybe I can uh, convince everyone that it's great. Because I don't know, maybe it is great. I don't know. <laughs> Shh, Emma, watch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, in fact, I'm still reading it, but I ignore everything he says. I think that would be wise, yes. <laughs> what is the pick for next month? Next month is The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. Can we talk about this cover really quick? I was showing it to Emma. Look at these dogs in clothes. <laughs> Very interesting. I love it and also dislike it at the same time. <laughs> Um, okay, they're at forty nine fifty one. It's optional, and that option is no. <laughs> Amazing. Um, um, yes, I've started it, but that just arrived for you today, right? Like it literally just got to your house. This came yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Sorry. Um, yes, and I think we have two months to read it. Yeah, because yeah, it maybe. is around like five hundred. Mine's around five hundred pages. Um, Caroline, is the writing small? Yes. Oh no. Oh no. That is very small. <laughs> so, unfortunately. Wow, yeah, that's really small. Ah, okay, well. Oh well. That's all right. I'll do it for Dickens. We'll get glasses. Um, yes, okay. it is for May and June. Um, all his best stuff is in later years, except the exception to the Christmas stories. Yes. Um, yeah, it is quite long, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that a lot of Dickens books, maybe because most most of them are long, that they have like such yeah. teeny tiny words. I'm like, just make the just do more pages then, but make the font bigger because then it's, I don't know, I just find it easier to get through and it's less daunting of like, I'm going to spend 10 minutes on one page. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Let me call up Penguin Classics really quick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I guess Carolyn and I will go because we have, um, we have a 24 hour readathon to get started. We do. Emma's very first 24 hour readathon. Do you want to tell them what we're Is it doing? not yours? Oh no, it's not yours. I've done many. I've done many. But I'm excited to, to be participating in your first 24 hour readathon. Um, um, yes, what are we reading? I'm going to be reading some of Carolyn's books that she picked for me to read that she really likes and vice versa. Yes, um, I'm going to be reading some of Emma's favorite picks what am i start i'm gonna be starting with uh heartstopper <gasps> yes oh my god I'm, I'm, i'm so excited it's a little bad um i'm going to be starting with the wind in the willows finally reading it um because my other books still have to arrive today <laughs> and, and the readathon is today so hopefully they arrive soon um Yes, it is 24 hours, but I am going to be sleeping. For... I'm not going to be sleeping. Are you actually going to stay awake? I think maybe until like, maybe 2 a.m. is a good. Wow. Good. Okay. Are you, how late are you staying up? Not that late? Um, I don't know. I mean, I am a night owl, so maybe I will stay up. Okay. Who knows? I'll just keep calling you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wake up. <laughs> Read your books. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm excited. Yes. How have we not mentioned Heart Supper? I don't know. I'm really scared that I'm not going to enjoy it, but we're going to see. Emma, I think Emma's going to love it. If she doesn't, we can no longer be friends. No, okay. <laughs> the Dickens and Tolstoy debate will end if Emma does not like Heart Supper. <laughs> Please. Oh, my God. All right. Well, 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And you guys can vote for the foreseeable future. It's going to be stay on Emma's community tab. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you guys so much for coming. This was fun. Yes. This is have awesome. a lovely rest of your Friday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. enjoy the Old Curiosity Shop if you're joining us for that one for next month. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. All right, we have to go read for the next 24 yeah. hours, Emma. <laughs> okay, ciao. Right. Ciao, thank you guys so much for coming. Have a wonderful, fantastic day. Yes. Okay, bye. bye.